Hey folks, I'm Demotro, and today I want to tell you about an interesting pattern within the question of which prime numbers can be a square number distance beneath another square number. And that question sort of has two layers. Which prime numbers is that possible for, and which square numbers make it possible in each case? Now just to clarify some terms, Prime numbers are whole numbers that cannot be factored into other whole numbers that multiply together into that prime unless it's one times itself. And square numbers are numbers that can be made by multiplying some whole number by itself. We could also square some negative number to get one of these squares, like negative 3 is another square root of 9. But we're just going to be looking at the principal positive roots in this case, like assuming A and B are positive, because if we included negative numbers for the roots, it wouldn't fundamentally change anything. The square numbers themselves are still going to be positive in either case, and adding negative numbers would just create more look-alike solutions as far as how we wrote those square numbers, basically. We also know that neither of these can be zero because a prime number isn't going to be a square square number itself, and the prime number is not going to be negative, so we can assume that to find possible solutions here, A and B are positive whole numbers, and when we say that a prime is a square number beneath another square, that's like saying A squared minus B squared is the prime. We'll find that 2 cannot be expressed as a difference of square numbers. However, 3 can. It's 2 squared minus 1 squared. So which primes can do this and which squares help them do this? Well, let's note that 3 here is an example of something being just 1 less than a square number. And if something is ever one less than a square number, that can be factored as x plus 1 times x minus 1 for whatever the root of that square was. And we can note that if this was possibly a prime number result, it would have to be 1 times the prime itself here. Otherwise, these would be factors that would multiply into a non-prime. So for one of these to be 1 in this case, x would have to equal 2, and this would have to be 3 times 1, which is the prime 3. So 3 is the only case of a prime that could be 1 less than a square, but it's not the only one that could be a square less than a square. For example, 5 equals 3 squared, which is 9, minus 2 squared, which is 4. So, in general, let's note the difference of squares identity to see how that helps or limits our possible solutions. a squared minus b squared can be factored as a plus b times a minus b. This is a cool classic identity, and you can also just verify that it's correct by using the distributive property here, and you will get that as the product. Now, what this tells us is that it's going to be kind of difficult for the difference of squares to be a prime because we have these two things multiplied together like factors, and it could only be a possible prime if one of these equaled 1 and the other was the prime itself. So similar to the case of 3, we can note that a minus b is going to have to equal 1, and a plus b is going to equal the prime. So in cases of possible prime results, a minus b is 1, or in other words, b equals a minus 1, and we can substitute this into this a plus b here, noting that that's going to be a plus a minus 1. So this also equals 
2a minus 1, which is what we get here when we substitute in this relationship, times 1, which is the difference between a and b. Now, first, let's note what this tells us about our original question. This means that if we have the difference of two squares and the positive roots of those squares aren't neighbors, then it can't be a prime result. And thus, in the cases where this relationship holds, the prime being the difference of two squares, the positive roots of those squares must be neighbors. Now, what happens when we take two neighboring numbers and add them together? One plus two is three, two plus three is five, three plus four is seven, and we get the odd numbers. We can also see that from this 2a minus 1. Odd numbers are often defined as the numbers that can be expressed as 2n plus 1, but we could equivalently say 2n minus 1. That would be equivalent because if we go up or down 1 from an even number, we get to an odd number. Also, because in modular arithmetic language, 1 and negative 1 are congruent in mod 2. Now, we can note that any odd number can be expressed in this form. So any odd number has two neighboring whole numbers that add up to it. And we saw that the difference of squares will equal this product. This is going to equal some odd number times 1. And depending on which a and b we choose, we can make it any odd number times 1. So if you're a prime number and you're also odd, there are two squares that you are the difference of. Two squares whose positive roots are neighboring whole numbers that add up to the prime. To be specific, for an odd prime, if we take it divided by two, that's gonna be halfway between two whole numbers. And if we take the whole number that's prime over two minus one half squared, and then subtract the whole number that's prime over two plus one half squared, that will equal the prime. These patterns also tell us some other cool things, like each prime lines up with a unique A that's specific to just that prime. This tells us, for example, that three is the only prime number that is either one less than any square number or a square number less than four. Similarly, five is the only prime number that is either four less than another square number or a square number less than nine. Overall, these are just some patterns that, oh, squirrel, some patterns that I realized the other day and thought were interesting. Hopefully some of you folks found them interesting as well. Also, remember, this is just my bonus channel, so also tune in to my Combo Class channel for my best main episodes. I'll link the playlist of the current grade that's going on there in the top comment and description of this video. Also, special thanks to the people who help make my videos possible, such as my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Here are all the people who have supported those ways so far, so maybe you'll consider supporting one of those ways too. You also get some bonus content if you're a supporter one of those places. Like today, I put out a secret extra video about me eating some fractal approximation vegetables. In any case, thank you all for watching. I love you, and I will catch you again soon.